So today what I want to do is talk to you guys about concept modeling in SketchUp. What you're seeing here on the screen is a 3D model of a eco home for a resort in the Cayman Islands. And what we were trying to do is convey the sense of place and the spirit of the architecture rather than focus on the real architecture. So you can see here that this model is pretty loosely built. You'll notice as I orbit around that I haven't paid any attention to the back of the architecture here because I knew that when we were going to present this idea to the client, it was only going to be one view just really to show the emotion of this uh, building here. So you can see that we've done a little bit of texturing in SketchUp. We have some stone from the Cayman Islands, which is really important. This is a limestone that is local to that location. Um, we've done a lot with uh, shading and trellis. We've got our little pool here. We've got some notion of furniture, but we haven't paid too much attention to what the furniture is going to look like. Again, what we're trying to do is convey a spirit and an emotion, and we're not trying to get into finished, built architecture. To us, design is really a collaborative process between our studio and the client, and it was important that the drawings conveyed a sense of discussion rather than a final product. We really wanted the client to be able to weigh in on where we were heading with the drawings. So you can see that this is about as far as we took the model in SketchUp. It can happen very quickly in the matter of a couple hours. One of the things that is great about SketchUp that we use a lot are the shadows. So we were adjusting the sun shadows to see how shadow play and shade would work across the architecture. Go through here and show. So what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about how we're going to export this particular building and prep it in Photoshop for what we're going to call a concept drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pick our view. So I'm going to go to scene one, which is a view that I have pre-selected. We can turn shadows on here just to make sure that we have the right shadow play on all the architecture, that that's feeling pretty good. Now, all the context, uh, the materials, the water, the grass, everything of that nature is going to happen either in V-Ray or it's going to happen in Photoshop or View, which are a couple other plugins that we use in conjunction with SketchUp. For this particular method today, what I want to do is just export a few things from SketchUp just to get the base set up in Photoshop before we go into V-Ray and Photoshop. So let's talk about what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the shadows. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click the hidden line option. And that's what should show up on your screen if you're following along. One of the things that we like doing here is we like setting the profiles to one. And I'll show you why we do that. So if I go over here and click Profiles at 1 in your Styles palette, you can see as I toggle that on and off, it just grabs a little bit more of the line work detail in the furniture. So by default, if you don't have profiles turned on, you lose a lot of the round edges in your SketchUp model in Hidden Line. If you come in here and check 1 for profiles, you now are going to catch all these little pillows of our chairs here, some of the rounded corners of the chair. There we go. So we'll go back to scene one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export that out. Export 2D graphic. And we'll call this lines. <clears throat> now I'm going to come down here to format. JPEG for us is totally fine. Go to options. I recommend that you check view, use view size and then uncheck it. So what that does is that's going to capture the SketchUp screen size that I have on my computer right now. But if I uncheck it, I'm now free to change the dimensions. I want something just a little bit higher quality. So I'm going to enter 2,000 pixels and then hit Tab. And what that's going to do is give me a 4,000 by 2,000 pixel drawing. Anti-alias is on and JPEG compression is at 10. Hit OK. Lines. That's going to export. That's done. Pretty easy. Now what I want to do is I want to develop something that we call here in the studio the color select layer. What that layer does is it allows us to have very quick selection and masking tools at our disposal in Photoshop. So here is our um, color option, just our shaded option in SketchUp here with no lines. I've now turned my edges and profiles off. 
and you can see right away I get some pretty good color blocks. I want to enhance that just a little bit more, so I'm going to bring up my color palette. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the stone material here, and I'm going to double click that to bring up the options to change that material, come up to the color wheel, and let's just have fun. Let's just drag that all the way over to red. So now in the shaded texture, all my color is now a bright red, which I know is going to be very easy for me to select in Photoshop. Uh, the brighter and more saturated, the better. So I'm just going to brighten that up here and close. And we are going to go through and do that just to a couple more key components. So what about the pool? Let's take a look at the pool. I'm going to come in here and let's just turn the pool green. Now one important thing is you can see I still have some opacity uh, settings on the pool. You can see through, so I'm just going to turn the opacity to 100%. Close. Let's see, anything else? Glass might be important. We're going to come in here and let's just change that to a color. Bright. That looks pretty good. And really, when you're using this process, this is really about what's going to work best for you in Photoshop. Knowing that while we're working on this drawing, what we're going to want are tools that are going to aid us in selecting areas very quickly so we can make adjustments on the fly to saturation, brightness, and contrast, even if you want to change the actual photographic material. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the exact same view. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to export 2D graphic. And I'm just going to call that color select. This time I'm going to save it as a PNG. The reason I'm going to save that as a PNG is what a PNG is going to do on my SketchUp export is it'll export everything we see on the screen, but then all the white will go to, to a transparency. So let's show you that. Same resolution here. OK. Export. Great. Now, believe it or not, I think we're ready to get into Photoshop. So let's do that. So here again, here's our color select model. You may have methods for uh, developing color select in your own SketchUp model. My method is hitting Command Z several times until I get back to my original materials. I've been asked that question before, so there you go. Now, no, no, uh, no harm done to the model. Back to original materials. We can go back here. Edges and profiles again. And there you go. There is the concept model for the Cayman Islands. So it's important to note here that what we're doing is we're going to leave the model kind of as is at this point and export this into the V-Ray for SketchUp plugin. Now what I'm going to do at this time is show you another method that you can use if you don't have access to a render engine like V-Ray or Maxwell or Twilight or Shader Light or Lumion or whatever you're going to use you can still create a very effective concept drawing to sell your ideas using only SketchUp and Photoshop. In fact, this is the way, this is a method that I used for several years um, early in my career. And given the time, this is something I still do if I'm uh, given a short deadline here. So what you're going to do is go back to your scene. Now we've already exported the lines and we've exported the color select layer. There's only two extra steps to do here. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my styles here. I'm going to turn off my edges and my profiles again, and I'm going to export exactly what you see here on the screen. So it's only going to be the textures that show through. So we're going to go through here, export 2D graphic. At this point, you can have a PNG or a JPEG. It doesn't really matter. We can call this SketchUp Render. Okay, let's just make sure we're at the same size. And we are. So we're going to export. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to export the shadows. And I typically export shadows as a separate layer so I have full flexibility and full customization in Photoshop. So again, I'm going to hide my edges and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn on my shadows. And now we have this great little shadow diagram of our building. And you can come into your shadow settings as everyone knows and change the position of the sun however you want. Find something that really works for you here. This is starting to look pretty good there. Get some cascading shadows on the furniture. You can adjust the brightness, contrast of the shadows in SketchUp. Now we're going to export. 
2D graphic. For shadows, I do recommend exporting them as a PNG again so we get rid of all the white background. We're going to call this SketchUp. Shadows. Okay, exported. Now what we're ready to do is we're ready to get into Photoshop and really bring this drawing to life.